Well, thank you, Paul, for that kind introduction. And hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here at this annual conference again and honored to appear as a speaker. Thank you, Irene, for the kind invitation. Three years ago, Nobuyuki Hirano, the chairman of MUFG Bank, this took this stage and made three points that still hold true. One, economic ties between our two, nation, two countries will always be fundamental to our relationship. Two, the United States will maintain its unquestioned presence of the world's most influential economic power and the Japan's largest market and best partner. And three, the key strengths and the growth driver for the U.S. economy is, without question, innovation. Hiranosan said, innovation is at the core of the American character and the single most defining feature of the nation. It's supported and driven by a society that prizes diversity, openness, and entrepreneurship. This diverse group of leaders here today, I'm sure, would agree. And we are all committed to the combined future of our two nations. Japan's immediate future, of course, includes the 2020 Summer Olympics, which brings to mind how excited the city was back in 1964 when it hosted the Games the first time. It felt like modern Japan was arriving on the world stage. We built the monorail to our little airport, Haneda. At least it was a little back then. We erected beautiful Olympic structures in Harajuku on the site of a former American military compound. The nation embraced an exercise program of walking 10,000 steps a day. And everywhere you looked at the city back then, well, you couldn't really see it. It's true, except for Tokyo Tower, there wasn't a skyline. Today, looking at Shinjuku, Roppongi, and other skyscraper zones, it's hard to imagine that when most of us were children or are not even born, these structures weren't possible or even legal. Because for earthquake protection, the city planning policy had always been build solid and low to the ground. But innovation in architecture and material science changed all that. Tokyo skyscrapers are safe today because their strength comes from resilience and the flexibility, not from stubborn rigidity. To me, that describes the spirit of innovation. Resilience, not resistance, to ride the sharp waves of a change. Unfortunately, while resistance is natural, resilience takes work. That's why the average lifespan of a company making the Fortune 500 list is under 20 years today, down from a 60 a half a century ago. So the question is, can we pave a path of success for both nations together, as dramatic as the one we traveled so far? With that question in mind, let me put on my MUFG hat. As a global financial institution, we have a unique view into the workings of healthy economies, prosperous communities, and sustainable businesses. We also have a duty to help keep that machinery running. This means supporting innovators and entrepreneurs. Our deep interest in the US-Japan relationship is a component of that. The state side of a heritage of MEFT dates back to 1880, when Yokohama Specie Bank opened its New York office. Then, after World War II, the Bank of Tokyo of California was founded and remains part of our company's heritage today. Back then, foreign banks had to fund most of their shares locally. 
that was impossible without support from the Japanese American community. An outstanding example of that support is Norman Mineta, a member of our first local advisory board. I can't wait to see the documentary about him that premiered at this conference tomorrow. Congratulations to its co producer, Diane Fukami and Deborah Nakatomi. The 2008 financial crisis opened other doors, a strategic alliance with Morgan Stanley and the privatization of the corporation that had evolved from the Bank of California. In 2015, MUFG dramatically broke with the tradition by appointing our first non-Japanese US CEO, Steve Cummings. I remember it well because I was sent to New York to help Steve establish our new governance model. And today, overseas operations deliver 40% of our total MEFG revenues back to our Tokyo head office, and the U.S. is the largest slice of the pie. We are still growing throughout our global markets and are learning from each other around the world. Personally, I got a tremendous benefit from observing the dynamic U.S. management style during my time in New York. I also saw our ties with the Japanese-American community grow stronger than ever. They originate in large part from former MUFG colleagues who paved the way, like Masa Tanaka, vice chair of USJC, and Yuko Kaifu, also a USJC board member and the president of Japan House, Los Angeles. These are just a few of the ways the U.S. and Japanese-American community have been a critical part of our global presence. How can we apply it? The global economy appears to be maintaining a momentum, but we have urgent work to do. Now is no time to hunker down low and to try to ride out the earthquakes. It's time, instead, to build a resilient, flexible organizations to serve a dynamic, transforming society. It's time to challenge the status quo. This is exactly why we are making deep reforms to the MEFG business model. But two things will not change our value and our mission. Our value is your trust entirely. Bankers are basically worthless if we cannot earn deserve the society's trust every single day. We earn it by fulfilling our mission to foster shared and sustainable growth for a better world through resources tailored to customer needs. Given these times, the mission will demand innovation. I see four areas where we can contribute. First, supporting innovators and entrepreneurs relevant to business. The best climate for them is in the United States, but we are making strides in Japan. Young people everywhere are digital natives. They speak a common language from Silicon Valley that is now universal. The only world they know has been shaped by disruptors like Airbnb, Uber, Google, Amazon, Facebook. They are not like their parents who knew a world where wealth was generated by global giants like General Electric and Coca-Cola, whose business models are being disrupted by new market realities. Today's market is more and more about the nimble entrepreneur, energetic, and eager to mark, make a mark. Last year, privately owned startups in Japan raised two and a half billion US dollars, up from 604 million US dollars in 2012. That's still just a small spark by global standards, but it's in everyone's interest to help nourish it into a flame. 
as one of the world's largest funders of small business development, this is something MFG is passionate about. We see fintech startups not as a disruptors, but instead as enablers. That's why MFG opened the Innovation Lab in the Silicon Valley in 2014 and another in New York a couple of years later. The lab collaborates with local startups, which sometimes turn into investments or partnership, like it did with the Coinbase, a digital currency exchange. In Japan, we've supported startups through our, through our MEFG Digital Accelerator. It's a mentoring and a nurturing program for fintech ventures that we started in 2016. We also partner with the Silicon Valley Japan platform, the US venture capital firm Plug and Play, and other accelerator programs that give startups opportunities on the global scale. The second way MUFG can contribute is to launch innovative projects with the promising enablers whose main goal is to make financial like more consumer friendly. For instance, we have a partnership investment in Akamai, a so-called edge computing content delivery platform. This could play a role in a future where blockchain architecture supports 10 million transactions per second. What does that mean? Well, in the Internet of Things, a connected car might automatically settle a pay-as-you-ride insurance premium or a tax by mileage, or even a token fee for tourism information during the family trip. The price for such services might be just a few yen. In today's world, a yen here or there wouldn't amount to any meaningful revenue. It wouldn't even cover transaction fees. But our new platform, powered by blockchain and edge computing technology, can make things hugely efficient. So efficient, in fact, that even small transactions can add up to a real bottom line and a brand new business. The third way we can contribute is by making fintech secure, building safeguards into the digital frontier. Business innovation will bring us convenience and growth, but also risk, compliance, and other concerns. We will need a sound governance framework. In this context, we created MUFG Coin, a unique virtual currency issued by us, the financial institution itself. Already, our employees use MUFG Coin in a test program for routine daily purchases, and we are planning to roll it out to the Japanese public. Aside from a consumer convenience, MUFG coin addresses the unstable valuation that plague other digital currencies. In fact, unlike cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, MUFG coin doesn't require a mining process, so its prices are fixed and stable and backed by deposits. With this reliable platform, we are preparing to lead the nation making a digital currency comfortable for everyone. Business leaders, engineers, academics, in fact, people from all walks of life will do both our nations a service by building a framework to help this vibrant new industry grow into a win-win for everyone. Finally, the fourth way we can contribute is to invest in the next generation Entrepreneurship will go nowhere without youthful passion and energy. MUFG wants to help equip young women and the men of the digital generation create their own future in the best possible way. The path to that future begins with understanding and respect among cultures. Thanks to our partnership with USJC, the seventh Tomodachi MUFG International Exchange Program this summer was a huge success. 
and the hearing from Tomodachi alumni at events like this keeps us motivated. It reminds us what we can do as a corporate citizens. Nothing is more rewarding than seeing young people grow by accepting each other. I have enormous confidence that these young people will bring the US, Japan even closer together and create ripple effects beyond measure. The changes we are talking about are enormous. They have the power to challenge the foundation of society. That can be frightening. But like most everyone at MUFG, I am an optimist by nature. More specifically, a pragmatic optimist. I'm excited by the facts. And the facts say there is reason to be optimistic about the friendship between our two nations. Our economic ties are strong and will only get stronger. Japan's United States fourth largest trading partner and the US is Japan's largest. That foundation can easily support more growth. Our social and the culture ties have never been stronger. This year, more than a million Americans will visit Japan and spend nearly one billion US dollars, while nearly four million Japanese will visit the US. Our younger generations are bound more closely together than ever before. Pop culture and social media give our children more in common with each other than with their own grandparents. That's why we need strong support for educational exchange. To my mind, it's the greatest catalyst to spark economic, cultural, and social growth and to prepare our young people to work as a global team. I have to confess that nurturing our international friendship is as much a personal devotion as anything else. I think of the US as my second home. In my Tokyo office, an entire wall is covered with a giant and large photo showing the exact view of New York that I enjoyed every day from my Manhattan apartment. It was a gift from my colleagues when I moved back to Tokyo last year. After two wonderful years in New York, it's a fantastic reminder of the bond I feel with the US and its remarkable people. I have a funny memory about New York. For years, I've swung my wooden Kendall sword 200 times every night. I did it in the Manhattan apartment with its giant windows, much to the amusement of my neighbors across the street. <laughs> that crazy Japanese with his wooden stick. But the discipline, persistence, and the practice has consistently helped keep me physically and mentally fit. And that's the key to kendo, consistency. That applies to society too. Consistency is how we build trust. So I want to humbly commend the USJC for your consistent devotion to protect and strengthen this special friendship between our two nations today, tomorrow, and far into the future. Indeed, in closing, to borrow from a wise Japanese proverb, no road is too long in the company of a friend. Thank you for listening and for all you do. Thank you.